Okay. So in this video, we are going to talk about scabies. We are going to discuss the presentation, diagnosis, and treatment of scabies in detail. First of all, scabies is caused by sarcotopes scabii. This is a picture showing sarcotopes scabies. Transmission of scabies occur by direct physical contact, skin to skin contact, sexual contact. And it occurs when you are sharing textiles with a person who is infected with scabies. Textiles like bedding, clothing, towels that can transmit scabies. Therefore, many times you would see that people who are infected with scabies coming to clinic will have a history of contact with a person who complains of itching. So the contact is direct physical or by sharing textiles. Risk factors include overcrowding. Therefore, many members of the same family are infected with scabies at the same time. Basically, the female mite of sarcotopes scabii tunnels into the superficial layer of skin. It enters the superficial layer of the skin called as stratum corneum. It lies over there and over here in the stratum corneum, it lays its egg and feces. This is a picture showing the tunneling of sarcotope scabii. You can look at the tunnel that it has formed and over here you can see the dark organism present. That is sarcotope scabii and that's how it lays its eggs and feces in the superficial part of skin. Then after two months, this female mite dies within the skin. The eggs hatch, the larvae mature into adult mites. And the feces, the decomposed part of female mite and the eggs and the larvae, they create a hypersensitivity reaction in the skin, a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction in the skin. Therefore, the patient would be itching. There will be itching. There will be pruritus. There will be excoriation. The place where the female mite is tunneling the skin, there will be excoriation and severe pruritus. Clinical features include intense pleuritis, especially at night. Warm bed or warm bath intensifies this itching. There will be burning sensation wherever this mite is burrowing the skin. You will see lesions on the skin, erythematous papules because there will be inflammation due to the burrowing of skin. There will be burrows like 2 to 10 millimeter in length as I showed you in the picture. And then the person will scratch it because there will be itching and that scratching of the skin further damages the skin and it causes bacterial super infection. That bacterial super infection results in the formation of pus and then there are pus filled cavities present in the skin. The lesions are filled with pus later on due to excessive itching and excessive pus formation later on crusts are formed hyperpigmentation is there because excessive damage and repair mechanisms of skin are active so basically it burrows the skin it causes itching pruritus person itches it then there is further injury to the skin bacteria enters causes formation of pus later on there is excessive uh, healing of the skin resulting in formation of crests and hyperpigmentation this is a picture showing these erythematous papules due to scabies this is a picture showing excoriated skin because the person is itching the skin look at the dry itchy skin this is another picture showing excoriations on the skin, mainly because person is scratching the skin and damaging the skin because there is excessive itching and pruritus. So these are all the clinical features with which the patient will present to you. Now, what are the areas of the body that are affected? Remember, it mainly affects the warm regions of the body, the areas of the body that are warm and have thin skin. Because thin skin is easy to penetrate, easy to burrow, and the warm temperatures are more favorable for the scabies. It affects the wrist, the flexor parts of the wrist. The interdigital folds are one of the main site of infection of sarcotope scabies. Male genitalia, penis, scrotum. Now all these areas have thin skin and they are warm. Intrigenous areas like axilla. So these are the areas that are mainly affected in sarcotopes KBI. The scenario that comes in the exams is that the patient is having severe itching, itching at night. The family members are also having itching problem and the itching is mainly in the axilla, in the genital area and in the 
interdigital folds. This is a classical presentation of scabies. Now coming to the diagnosis of scabies. The diagnosis of scabies is mainly clinical. You do not need any investigations to prove uh, scabies infection. But if you want to do, you can go for dermoscopy. In dermoscopy, this is a picture showing dermoscope. Dermoscope is placed over the area where you are suspecting that the patient is having infection and you look through this dermoscope, you look at that mite. That mite is present in the superficial part of the skin. Other than that, microscopic examination of the skin can be done. What, uh, what they do is that they put an adhesive tape over the area where there is severe itching, then they take the adhesive tape off and then they put it under the slide and look it under the microscope. Other than that, skin scrapings and histologies are rarely performed. It's a mainly clinical diagnosis. So these many investigations are not required. So you can remember one thing and that is dermoscopy. An important thing to remember is that scabies can be easily mistaken for eczema because eczema also presents with skin itching and doctor can prescribe glucocorticoid to the patient. When the patient applies glucocorticoid to the skin, it alleviates the itching, it reduces the itching. So it is considered as eczema. But as soon as the patient stops using glucocorticoids, patient again develops itching. So that can be confused with eczema. Scabies should not be confused with eczema. Now coming to the treatment of scabies. In the treatment of scabies, remember permethrene 5% lotion is the drug of choice for scabies. Permethrene blocks the voltage gated sodium channels in the sarcotope scabii and it causes the paralysis and depth of the sarcotope scabii. Therefore, it should be applied to every part of the body and should be left on the skin for 8 to 12 hours before rinsing it off. So you ask the patient that you should apply it all over the skin and keep it there for 8 to 12 hours then take a bath. And this application must be repeated once again one week later. So they apply it one at the time of presentation and after one week they again apply it all over their skin and wash it after 8 to 12 hours. If permethrene is not available, then you can go for lindane 1% lotion, gamma benzene hydrochloride lotion. It's another name for lindane 1%. But this is contraindicated in children under 10 years of age, in pregnant female and lactating women because it increases the risk of seizures. So you must remember that permethrene is the drug of choice. It is preferred. But if you do not have that, you can go for lindane 1% solution. Oral ivermectin tablets are also available in the market and they are only indicated in severe form of scabies and they are given with the permethrene lotion in severe cases of scabies and they are given with the dose of 200 microgram per kg per dose taken with food each approximately one week apart. So the patient takes the first dose at the time of presentation and just like the lotion they use it they take the tablets one week later. Other options to treat sarcotope scabies include crotomitone, 10% cream or lotion, sulfur ointment. But sulfur ointment is less effective. So you must have permethrin in your mind that it is a drug of choice and most important drug. And oral ivermectin only in the severe cases. You also need to provide symptomatic relief. These drugs will kill the sarcotope scabies mite. But with that, you need to give oral antihistamine, especially at night to prevent itching. If itching is severe, topical corticosteroids can be used, but oral antihistamines should be preferred. Calamine lotion also can provide symptomatic relief. Now, with this thing, applying lotion all over the body using permethrene or using ivermectin, the most important thing with that is washing all the textiles that that patient is using. All the towels, all the bed sheets, all the clothing that that patient is using, you tell them to wash them on day first, the day where they are taking the, their first dose and day eight post treatment, they need to wash their clothes. So it's basically that you tell the patient that you need to apply this lotion today. You need to rinse it off after eight to 12 hours. You need to wash the clothes as well. And if it is a severe case, you also give oral ivermectin tablets and you have to repeat the drill after seven days the same thing needs to be done after seven days and after that they must take care of the hygiene and take care of the cleanliness remember all the contacts in house should also be treated now these general measures are more important than the treatment because if the patient does not follow these general measures that patient will again get reinfected from the textiles from anyone infected in the house so these general measures must be equally followed 
as the treatment is being followed. In summary, we talked about the sarcotopes, KBI, the transmission, how the female mites burrows the skin and causes hypersensitivity, the clinical features, pruritus at night, burning sensation, and the areas of the body that are affected, warm, thin areas of the skin are affected, the diagnosis with dermoscopy, drug of choice, permethrin lotion, lindane, oral ivermectin in severe cases, sulfur ointment, critamaton, symptomatic relief with antihistamines, general Myers washing all the textiles. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and infectious medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.